Yo, this is Patrick from Guy in the Cube, and in this video, I'm going to talk all about data flows. Stay tuned. All right, so I did a video on where you create a column, what you should use it, the query editor, or push it back to the source, and I got a lot of questions about data flows, and I was like, well, no, talk about data flows, just use the query editor, use the data source. All right, Patrick, we need to talk. What the f You know, my office is right behind that wall. I really don't Some care. of us have actual data flows work to do. Data flows work. I didn't even know that was a real thing. They, you know they are, so. <laughs> I thought everything was just done in the source. Do we need to talk? Okay, where's your laptop? All right. Where's your laptop? Okay, guys, I'm joined here by the world famous Dr. Data Flow. Mr. Matthew Roach. The D in PhD stands for data flow. Okay, data flow, Dr. Data Flow. <laughs> All right, Dr. Data Flow. So, I've got a lot of questions about data flows. I did a video and I just kind of didn't even talk about them. And people were like, where do they fit? Right, should I use it between the query editor and the data source? It's the same thing. Yep. And want to know more about it. So I, I assume that this video was in the context of reuse, right? So where do I put logic so that it has the most impact? Your assumption is correct. So you must have the smartest viewers out there mentioning data flows here because this is exactly where we want them to be. And a lot of it really comes down to thinking about where should I add data into my end-to-end, -end, no pun intended, flow uh, between the source and the end analytics model, Power BI provides a lot of options and data flows are you know, one of the newest and one of the most powerful. And it fits somewhere. It fits somewhere, so let's... let's okay, wait, wait, wait. So Matthew, instead of all this talking, yep. let's head over to my laptop. Excellent, so here we are. So we're looking at, uh, uh, we're looking at a workspace in Power BI. So I've already come to the data flows tab and as you can see, I have uh, a bunch of data flows. I don't do a lot of other work in Power BI these days because data flows is where I spend most of my time. So you only create data flows? Well, I also create some reports and some data sets and other such things, but I spend a lot more time in data flows just as in uh, most BI projects there are people with different areas of expertise sure. or different areas of influence working on uh, the earlier parts of the of the end-to-end -end flow. It's my, my happy place. It's okay. where, I, where right. I've always, uh, always okay. spent my time. Before we dig in here too deeply, uh, in an ideal world, we would always have the data that we need in the data warehouse. So it's ready, it's uh, prepared for analytics, it is uh, in the shape and the format and the location that we need, and if we need something added, we can just reach out and say uh, to someone in IT, it's like, hey, I need this thing, and they'll deliver it same day so we don't need to wait. Which alternate universe do you live in, Yeah, in idea? Yeah, not that one. Okay. So that's, that's the ideal world, right? <laughs> okay. uh, in the world that we live in, this is where data flows come sure. in. So yeah. I'm a business user, and there's, there's a data source, let's say, for example, AdventureWorks. But I need extra data. But I need extra data. Okay. And uh, without data flows, what I can do is I can simply add new columns into my data model. Sure. I can do Power Query inside of Power BI Desktop so that my wait. data set, wait, wait, hold on a second, okay. so that my data set will include those additional columns or additional calculations, but the issue there is that the data that I add is only part of my one model, gotcha. which reduces the opportunity for reuse. So can I do this on a MacBook? Oh, absolutely. This All is, right. this is... Come on, you weren't there, expecting there, that. There, <laughs> I was not expecting that. It's like, um, I don't know if you have a MacBook, uh, but if you have one, you can do this. Uh, so the, the, the key thing here is the data flows design experience. This is, of course, where you're going. Sure. It's built into the browser. It uses Power Query Online. So as I'm adding new entities into my data flow. Whoa, what's uh, an entity? Uh, uh, think of it as a table. OK, all right. So uh, as I'm adding new entities into my data flow, I can simply select, as I would in any Power Query tool, my data source. Here we'll put in our connection information. So I put in my server name, I put in my database name. This is the data mart, my AdventureWorks data mart sure. uh, that I need to get data from. And I can pull, you know, let's say the you know, two different tables, click transform data, and use this as a starting point to get the data into the shape that I need for my solution. Uh, I can do you know, any type of transformation that I could do in Power BI Desktop, Power Query, basically building a set of reusable tables. Let's get those guys out of the way. We'll do some renaming. Uh, because data flows are backed by Azure storage, so it's actually file storage under the hood, complex types, we'll need to remove these guys. 
We'll get that out of the way. So we'll this is this like out Power of the way. Query. It is Power Query. Ah. So this is Power Query Online. This is what our, uh, our colleagues uh, in the Power Apps world have been using for, for months and months now. So basically, Not this years. is. Not years. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. So many months, possibly years. I'm not a, a, a Power Apps professional. Okay. All right. but, okay. what, but what we have here is the Power Query experience embedded in the browser. This is basically how we can enable any user from any location and any platform to have both Power Query uh, designer in the browser and perhaps most excitingly, the execution process is in the cloud. It's, it's run inside the Power BI service, not limited by your laptop. So I'm going to be honest with you, yeah. this is making me really happy. Yeah. Okay. So the interesting thing, so here, here we have some, uh, some entities that we've pulled out of our central data warehouse. Yep. Yep. But what we want to do, the, the reason we're using data flows here instead of just sending, sending people to the data warehouse, is we want to do a mashup on top of it. So I can pull in data from additional sources. So here I've got some promotion data uh, that I've stored in a text file up in the cloud. So we've got a, a ADF process that is producing new promotion data. Uh, and we can put in our connection string and both add a new entity, kind of like adding a new table to the data mart. Uh, and we can mash things up. So I'll say combine tables, merge queries as new. So super familiar to anyone who is working in Power Query. And I can say, let's have our customer on the left. Let's have our promotions on the right. Uh, we'll have the account ID and our customer GUID as our join. We'll then come over. Oh, we will continue. So basically, it's saying, oh, it's, it's doing the, uh, privacy. Uh, the, the privacy settings exactly just like we would expect and want a uh, Power Query to do. I scroll over to the right and expand out the new uh, column uh, to choose those columns new columns that, that I so want. So you're creating a mashup. You're creating a like almost a, a central place for this data. Can other people use this? Oh, that is the beauty oh, okay. of Power BI. So when I save this, mm -hmm. so we'll choose Save and Close. Sure, sure, sure. Is that Close and Apply? Uh, yes, it is. I actually need to click it for it to work. So we'll save and close. The apply actually comes as the next step because we've created a new data flow. Oh. The data flow is an object inside our workspace, just like uh, a data set or a report or a dashboard would be. We'll give this guy a name so we can remember guy who, who I made it flow. for. So huh. you don't need a cube anymore. Now you can have something that's a little bit more new and exciting. Hmm. Cube, and, I like it because yeah. it's like many sides to it. Exactly. And we will now have the option to refresh. We'll remove this uh, try to recover from cache. Uh, we get that sometimes. Uh, but now we are refreshing the data, which is essentially running the queries that define each of these entities, because behind them is each uh, a Power Query query. Yep. So we refresh it. Now this data flow has physical data stored in Azure, all managed by Power BI. And I can come over into Power BI Desktop and use this so both I can and any other user who is a member of the workspace with permissions uh, to access it, I can come in and say, I want to get data from Power BI data flows. It's going to make a connection using my, uh, my Azure Active Direc Directory credentials, just connecting back up to that Power BI service. And here I'm going to see a list of all of the uh, workspaces that I have permission to access that have data flows in them. Mm -hmm. I will come into my workspace, the one that I've just created this. I will find that uh, data flow that I just created with you. And now I can use this as a starting point. And I'll simply load that into uh, my workbook. It's going to import that data. It uses import mode for access today. So we'll load that data in. and. I can now build reports and dashboards and visuals on top of it as I would with data from any source. And I can do additional mashups as part of my PBIX file. But the most important, important exciting thing is that the work that I've done here, combining the data from the AdventureWorks data mart and that promotions text file, I can now have this available in the cloud for any authorized user to have as a building block for their Power BI applications. And this essentially gives 
uh, me the ability to do the work that previously I would need to go to IT to do. We now have this reusable data entity like a table in a data mart or data warehouse backed by Azure, all inside the Power BI service, easily discoverable, that can be used as a building block for other analysts uh, where appropriate. So I'm about to ask you the million dollar question. Of course. It's a million dollar question. So this can replace my data warehouse? Uh, absolutely not. Okay. Can you elaborate? And I certainly okay. can. Okay. So, so when we think about the data warehouse today, the enterprise data warehouse is a very mature technology with all sorts of scale and performance optimizations built in. And it's designed for uh, typically these large scale centrally managed solutions. Yep. Data flows are designed to enable, well, so the primary use case for data flows today is to close the gap in that data warehouse. So behind the scenes, these are files in folders. So they're, they're files in Azure Data Lake, or Azure Storage under the hood. And it does not have the same performance characteristics and scale capabilities that a modern cloud data warehouse would have today. So if you say, oh, I don't need uh, Azure SQL DW or SQL Server uh, data warehouse anymore, uh, even though a lot of the capabilities are the same, that performance and scale from the self-service data flows in Power BI, at least today, are not going to uh, really deliver the performance that you need. One of the things that is currently in preview uh, and is coming soon in data flows is uh, what we're calling the advanced compute engine. This is essentially, aha, uh -huh, I got, got your, uh, you did, uh, got you your did, attention. You it did. sounds really yeah. exciting. So this is uh, really the best of both worlds, yep. where uh, when it is configured in Power BI Premium, the work that's done by an analyst can load data into the data lake under the hood, mm -hmm. but at the same time, Power BI will automatically index that data and store it in uh, Azure SQL DB so that you can have both the performance of SQL uh, and uh, the uh, uh, direct query access to it oh. uh, so that as you're consuming it, it doesn't need to be, uh, doesn't need to be uh, import mode only. Uh -huh. uh, so, so this will give you that self-service with a lot of the characteristics of a data warehouse. All right, so, so I want to just kind of sum this up just a little bit, Matthew. Yeah. So I'm an IT professional, I build a data warehouse. You are an analyst, yep. right? You look at my data warehouse, I'm missing something from my data warehouse. You come to me and you say, hey, Patrick, can you add promotions to my data warehouse? I go, sure, let me have a meeting about a meeting about a meeting. <laughs> and it's six decide, months later. Right, And but instead of you waiting. Yes. Yeah, so I can close the gap today, which is really the reason why we have self-service BI tools Got in it. the first place. It's not to replace IT. Sure. It's to allow IT to focus on the strategic challenges while business is solving their agile day-to-day -day problems. And because it is a power query, every data flow entity is defined by a power query query that's easy to hand off to IT and they can take this and use this in whatever way they want because power query is a, a core capability in many different tools. All right, so that was great, right? My mind is blown right now. All right, so what do you guys think? You got any questions, any comments? You know what to do, post it in the comments below. It's your first time visiting the guy in the cube channel hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, give me a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself and Matthew Roach. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, everybody. Don't ham it up. Don't. Ham it up. Yeah, don't, you, now I'm don't, about to. Don't ham me up.